Good morning. Good morning. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's snowing. And it's snowing. Why are you singing? Oh, I thought that's what we were doing today. No? <laughs> Apparently you are, definitely. <laughs> okay. So neither one of us went to the gym today. I thought you were going to say, how was your workout? I was not going to say, how was your workout? Because I know you didn't go. Oh, bummer. Because you turned the light off. I did. <laughs> I went, I went, got up, got into the bathroom, came back out, turned the light on, went back, and I said, what are you doing? Because <laughs> he decided the roads were not good to, uh, to drive on. No, they didn't. So he climbed back in bed, and we slept a little more. Yay. Yay. <laughs> it was nice. So that's nice. Um, what are you having for breakfast? I am having oatmeal. No, I thought about this the other day. Oh, did you? Yes. Okay, well, I do think once in a while. Pontificate you know, upon it. I can see the smoke, you know, going. And I said that every morning we talk about what we have for breakfast, and I always say I have oatmeal, and I even tell them what I have. But I never really tell them how much I have. Right. They have to go look at the, um, our journals have that on it, but you can tell them. Okay. So my oatmeal breakdown today is I have a half a cup of dry rolled oats. I have uh, a tablespoon of hemp seed, a tablespoon of chia seed, a tablespoon of sunflower seeds, and a tablespoon of pumpkin seeds. I have a teaspoon of the amla powder, a teaspoon of spirulina. Really? You don't use half a teaspoon of spirulina? No, I use a, well, what is that? Measure. This one? Yeah. Half. I use a half a teaspoon of spirulina, like <laughs> I said. <laughs> And then I have a whole banana, and that varies in size depending on what type of, you know, what bananas we're able to get. Mm -hmm. um, I put a handful of raisins, and at my hand size, I don't know what that is, maybe a half a cup, maybe a little bit more. Um, and blueberries, and the blueberries is about... Three quarters of a cup, about three quarters. I'm pretty generous with the blueberries. And so that's what I have in my oatmeal every morning. Very good. Yeah. And I have about the same thing, although I, I add frozen raspberries to mine. because. Good morning, Lori. Hey, Lori. It's good to see you. We're bummed we're not going to be able to see you this evening because of the cancellation. Right. But that's all right. We'll come when we it gets forward, rescheduled. I was say, we look forward for when it is rescheduled. Yeah. Um, I did the radio show yesterday, and it went really well. It Had was. a lot of fun. I listened to um, the whole thing. Rick Jensen is always fun. Like he and I always have a good time together. I've um, got to talk to some really interesting guests, yeah. so that was that was a good time. As is normal with me, I was super confident going into it. I was super confident doing it. I was so worried. And then, yeah, sure you were. <laughs> but then when it gets over, then I worry. I'm like, oh, did I say something stupid? Did I do something that was bad for my brand? Did I scare people? No one's gonna hire me because now they're like, oh my goodness, she's so aggressive. So yeah, then I worry about it after, which is totally normal for right. me. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> so, but that was fun. I had a good time with, uh, with Rick and, and the guests that he had on for um, um, when, the Women in good Business show. show. Very good show. So that was fun. Um, so we want to talk to you about inflammation. Um, you may have seen, I guess it's been maybe 10 days ago now, Russ and I were on an impromptu live with um, Ivan Thomas from DETV. Right. And... We, we were, ended up chatting for like 45 minutes on mm -hmm. Facebook Live about different things. And one of the questions we got from somebody was, can you talk about inflammation? And I did, at that time, talk about inflammation. And I talked about how dairy causes inflammation. And that, you know, I, I don't know if your mother did, but when I was little, when I was sick, my mother would never let me drink milk because she caught, said it caused phlegm in your throat. Mm. So that's an inflammation response. I got the opposite. Really drinking? Drink milk, grow tall. Guess well, what didn't work? <laughs> you're plenty tall enough. Uh. <laughs> um, so let's talk about what is inflammation, first of all. What, what is that? Why does our body do that? And so inflammation is the response the body has when it's trying to fight something, when something isn't right, right. in the system. Right. And we're pixelating, of course. Oh, geez. Well, but let's see if it corrects itself. Don't worry. I have the camera running, so I'll upload that one to, to the r, r Journey page so you won't have to deal with the pixelation if you watch it in the reruns. Um, so inflammation is the body's response to trying to fix a problem with, um, with, with something. Something's bothering it. So... That if you have allergies, that's an inflammation response. Right. And sometimes your body has an over response. And so autoimmune disease are the over response of inflammation. Right. So obviously that's, that's a problem. So is it possible that if you try to um, create health in your body, that you're gonna get over response of inflammation? Yes, if you're taking drugs. No, if you're using whole foods. Hmm. 
But do I get over inflammation? I don't know if you know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyhow. Okay. When I work out as much as I do. Because you're tearing your muscle down, which should cause an infl inflammatory reaction by the body. It does cause an inflammatory reaction, and I, I don't know this. Like, I couldn't give you where I'll I know this from, but up. we can look yeah. it up. Yeah. But your body um, doesn't have the same white blood cell response to right. that as it does which to, makes to, sense. to invaders. So, a lot of your inflammation starts in your gut. Um, so, the surface area of the human gut is 3,000 square feet, which is about... Um, is more than the size of a tennis court. Right. So, and then what keeps the outside out and the inside in from your gut is only a single layer of cells. Hmm. And that single layer of cells has to be healthy or you end up with stuff like leaky gut and you get hmm. you know, lots of inflammation from that and there's a lot of, a lot of problems. So that single cell layer that, that is in your intestines, you're in your gut that protects you from because the outside is everything that's going through your gut, right? right? There's toxins and all kinds of stuff in there that have to get get put out. And that single layer of cells is kept, kept healthy by a, um, a thing called butyrate. B-U-T-Y-R-A-T-E. I'm not exactly sure how to say that. but And that gets created by gut bacteria from fiber. Right. Now, we've talked before about how the standard American diet is really, really low on fiber. Yes. And obviously, Sickling, sickle. Sickeningly so. Thank you. There you, you go. You know what I was going to say. Yeah. Cheers. So, <laughs> lack of fiber equals gut inflammation because it, it means that there's a lack of butyrate in your system to help quell the inflammation. Now, remember we've talked about in the Paleolithic era, studies have shown that they took in 100 grams of fiber a day. And even eating whole food plant-based, we you're don't not, get that yeah, much fiber. Close to that, yeah. There's not even close to that much fiber. But we do get more fiber than the standard American diet right. because fiber only comes from plants. Right. It doesn't come from animal products at all. There's right. no fiber in animal-based products. And they've shown that eating animal protein causes a spike in inflammation. It also causes a spike in insulin. But eating whole food plants can blunt that right. spike in inflammation caused by eating eating um, animal-based foods. So how can we boost immunity, which immunity is an inflammation response, right? Because the inflammation is what attacks the things and get it out. Right. So immunity is good, you want that, mm -hmm. but you don't want it too much because if you get too much, then you end up you know, running eyes, running nose, and right. you know, the allergy effect, you don't want that. So you can boost immunity while reducing inflammation by eating mushrooms. And there you, you go. You need to eat. Um, the study, they were eating one cup of mushrooms daily. It takes about a week to start seeing the response. Mm -hmm. And then it lasts a week after you stop eating mushrooms. So what they... Sorry. I was going to say, is that any mushroom? That they they studied study? white button mushrooms specifically. So the standard button, the standard standard button mushrooms mushroom. get the grocery store. Right. Okay. But the um, article that I read said they think that most mushrooms. Okay. But the study was specifically on white button mushrooms. Okay. And so if you eat them consistently, you're going to get the good boosting of immunity while reducing inflammation. Cool. Now, obviously, you need to eat your fiber. And they did a study, and it shows that fiber supplements do not do the same thing as eating a uh, plant-based fiber. And I would think fiber supplements could be either organic or inorganic, depending on who's manufacturing them. All, I, all it said was that fiber supplements don't do the same thing. Okay. I didn't get into any details as to far which ones and what they study. It just says... As a general rule. Eat, if you eat whole plants that have the fiber in them, and, you know, eating, obviously, oatmeal is going to be really good for you, but, yeah, oatmeal. Any whole plants which have the fiber in them are going to be good for your inflammation response. Obviously, reducing animal protein intake specifically dairy, but all animal protein does cause an inflammation response. And then if you do both, by reducing the animal proteins and increasing the fiber, you're racist. Right, exactly. Right. And I talked to someone yesterday, I mentioned this yesterday, or I talked to her on Monday, I think. Anyway, and she has just cut dairy out of her diet, right. told and me, she yeah. lost 10 pounds, and she was a little concerned, and yeah. I'm like, that's just inflammation, and that's normal when you mm -hmm. when you reduce the dairy or cut the dairy out of your you diet. some weight. The inflammation definitely drops because your body's not fighting that that process that it isn't really good at doing. Right. So in short, 
If you want to have less inflammation, increase your plant, your plant protein and decrease your animal. Uh, increase your plant fiber and decrease your animal protein. I can talk this right, morning. Right, exactly. Um, I know you didn't really look into this too much, but do you have anything you wanted to add about that? Uh, no, I, I always, every time we talk about this stuff, I always think about, you know, 25 years ago when I, when I had a gym mm -hmm. and I was competing in bodybuilding, I was a professional trainer. And I used to hold a class on nutrition. Mm -hmm. I think I told you that. Right. Um, so we had a we had an aerobics room, and, and then when there was an aerobic class once a week, I'd run a nutritional class. And I used to have my whiteboard, and, and this is you know I took classes in college, so I got that information. Plus, I did a lot of research because it was important to me as a bodybuilder. Right. And I used to sit there and break down the the uh, the, the amino acid chain and how that worked, and the uh, fatty acids and all the fats and the and a mono and a poly and the saturated fats and and you know the, the little chart where you have the little ball and lines. And did you talk with your hands? I, well, how could I, <laughs> how could I not have talked with my hands? You know, look at this. I mean, you know, they're God given to me for that purpose. Right. You know, um, but I, and so the science I was talking about then was actually real science. I mean, as far as how chains would break them, that doesn't change over time. Right. But what I used to preach back then was a 20-20-60 diet which was 20% uh, fat, 20% protein, and 60% you know, carbohydrates. Carbs, yeah. And I didn't get into the whole, you know, whole grain. Um, but you know, it was just interesting to me from that perspective to think about how I used to talk about it then. And now we're talking 10, 10, 80. 10, 10, 80, which that's, that to me doesn't seem humongously different. It's not hugely different. Right, if that's even a word. If it's not, <laughs> I made up a word, put it in a dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so that doesn't seem that I'm not like ooh uh, I just I just figure okay so we had the numbers off slightly you know and I was bodybuilding so I figured well maybe because of how much stress I was putting in body now I realize that's not nothing true. yeah right? um, as a matter of fact I like the way I look now and have my, my muscles seem to be hardening you know which is of course you know a bodybuilder's dream you know? right even even a retired senior <laughs> citizen bodybuilder you're not a senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so it's just interesting from that perspective, looking at it how I looked at it then and mm -hmm. looking at it now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as I've said before, I wish I had the knowledge I have now. Yeah. Back then, I would, I I would have been a much better body. No, no, I did fairly well, but I think I would have just been... I think I would have been a definitely a better volleyball player. And then whatever athlete. I mean, I played semi-pro football. I probably would have been a better football player. Right. You know? Yeah. I'd run faster. I mean, as a, as a runner, as I was a running back, if you could run... You know, two tenths of a second faster in your forty. That's a big difference. Yeah. That's outrunning somebody who's chasing you. <laughs> and people used to chase me. They're very mean that way. <laughs> Just because I had a round, this oval-shaped thing in my arm. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I can definitely tell you from my experience of switching over to being whole food plant based that the inflammation for me has gone way down. Mm -hmm. I don't have the gut issues I used to have. I used to struggle with gut issues and I don't have that anymore. Right, right. So the science says it works and I can tell you that from personal experience it also works. And the biggest thrill or pleasure or joy that, I, that or realization, I don't know what's the right word. Pick a use. word, any word. <laughs> Suggest them please. No. Um, is that feeling, that lack of that bloated feeling mm -hmm. at night mm -hmm. when you go to bed after you've had dinner. Right. Right. And, and, and whether you've gone out and had dinner or whether you're home and you had your standard American diet. And everybody out there knows what we're talking about where you, even that if you don't, eat, even if you don't eat that much, you get this bloated, like, why am I feeling so bloated? Right. And that's gone. I, I mean, even when... It, Ron will attest to the fact that I stuff myself now. Sometimes he eats a lot of food. You know, and, and, and I feel full, don't get me wrong, I get that full feeling, but not that uncomfortable yeah. where I can't go to bed, you know, feeling. I'm yeah. just, and this, that's fantastic to me, because yeah. I like to eat. I know. I'm a big fan of eating. And, and you're at your, uh, you know, ideal, ideal weight, weight. Yeah. and he eats more. And we have always say, on this diet, you can eat as much as you want, because you Don't can't. Don't want to be a show up, I mean, look at that waistline. He loves to show up his waist, Look at that waistline, he? folks. <laughs> He's such a show up. <laughs> All right. If you guys are getting value out of these, please do like and share. Help us reach other people so that we can make a difference in the health and wellness of um, more, more people. That would be great. And if you are not on our mailing list, please do get on it because it went out this morning and I sent yep. out um, a list of meals you can make if you didn't plan ahead. There's like eight or nine of them I put on there. Right. So if you aren't on our mailing list, jump over to our website, rnrjourney.com, and um, just click on the join your mailing list at the top and it'll um, send me an email excuse me send me an email i can't talk and let me know to add you so did you have anything else you need to say um, to them 
No, just uh, visit our website, as Robin said. Did you say that? I did say. Okay, visit our website. Join uh, our website. If you want to um, contribute and help us uh, continue this and, and do free uh, speaking events and help other people uh, come on to a whole food plant-based diet, we do have a supporters page. Uh, please visit that. And um, yeah. anything else? I think that's it. I think that covers it. So with that, we will say, eat real food, not too much, mostly, mostly plants. plants. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day. Have a good day.